Hello, I'm Po Yin. I'm Peter. We are master's students in Columbia University. Today we are going to introduce our Class D audio amplifier projects in the VOSI Design Lab course. This course is taught by Professor Kinje in 2014 spring. This is the proto board of our chip. As you can see, our chip is centered right here. We have the battery power input here and it's powering our entire chip. The signal is a from a signal generator, one kilohertz tone coming in and enter our chip through the feedback loop and out at the output filter section where we have a atom resistor acting as the load. Uh, as you can see from the screen, this is our 1K hertz input signal and this is the negative channel output. This is the positive channel output and by minus the two channel we have the differential output signal here and as you can see from the screen we can we have a, a gain about a five. If we zoom into the audio band from zero to 20 kilohertz you can see that the one kilohertz tone is dominating whereas the odd and even order harmonics are present but if we take the signal differentially between the positive and negative output, the even order harmonics will be suppressed. So enough of the graph and oscilloscope. Now we will turn to an actual tone going through a speaker and it's only being powered by the battery. So it will get a little loud as we first install the battery as it settles into steady state. As you can hear, this is a 1 kilohertz tone playing through the speaker. This is the final and most important demo of our chip because our chip right here is designed to amplify audio signal and play them through a speaker. So what we will demonstrate is that using a phone through an audio cable going into our board, we'll have a potentiometer here to adjust the volume it will play the music through a speaker all while being powered through two AA batteries. So now let's put in the battery and see what happens. No music because we haven't started playing and the volume is at the minimum. So let's increase the volume right now. As you have heard, the music is pretty loud for the speaker, in fact it could fill the whole room. So this demonstrated the success of our chip design as well as our board that we are successfully able to play the music through any source going into the stereo cable into the speaker. And with just two AA battery powering them, we have measured the current draw from this board and is lo much lower compared to your traditional linear amplifier. To give you an idea of what our chip does, this is a typical arrangement of a Class D audio amplifier. The input audio signal is passed through a PWM wave generator in which it is compared to a high frequency triangular wave. The output is then a square wave where the duty cycle is proportional to the input amplitude. This is then passed through a pair of output devices and it is brought to a higher VDD level. This is different than typical linear audio amplifier arrangement where the output devices are operated in linear or active or saturation region. In a class D audio amplifier, the output devices are either switched on or off so that the efficiency is very high. Of course, the output is still a PWM wave and cannot be played through a speaker. So what we have is a low-pass filter to recover the audio signal and to attenuate the high-frequency component. The final result is an amplified version of the input signal and can be passed into a speaker. Uh, as you can see from the screen, this is our detailed schematics of our chips. Uh, we add a single end to differential converter to increase the output signal magnitude and this signal pass through the converter and then pass into the two signals 
and the PWN generator will generate a square wave whose duty cycle is proportional to the magnitude of the input signal and we have a dead time control here to prevent cross bar current and after the signal passes through the output stage passes through the output low pass filter it will recover the low frequency component of the original signal and then pass it to the speaker we have our audio here and here we have a feedback loop to improve the power supply's noise rejection Overall, we think our chip design as well as our board design is a success. So in conclusion, we want to thank Professor Peter Kingit for his instruction, as well as the TAs, Chingri and Touche for their assistance along the way. Also, we want to thank Moses for um, the chip fabrication that they provide us so that we can have an actual chip for us to test. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you soon.